Hey everybody, welcome back to Dunrovin Ranch in lovely Lolo, Montana. I am your very own personal ranch manager, Kelly. And man, is it a gorgeous day. I was just saying to Jake that, I don't know, it seemed like half an hour ago, we needed all of our layers. And now here in the gorgeous sunshine, it feels like it's about 100 degrees. And um, I won't take my layers off on camera, but, but it's, it's gonna have to happen soon. Um, barely a cloud in the sky, fall day, leaves are falling it's just it's remarkable i you know uh, i will never say that i'm from montana or that montana is home but it's the first time i felt a, that i belonged in a place and I, i'll be here it'll be two years in january really yeah montana is spectacular um Quickly, yes, there is an osprey in the neighborhood. I was on the river ride. I took a father and daughter across the river yesterday morning, the nine o'clock ride. And yes, down by the river um, on this side, uh, there was an osprey and it went up, it took off, it chirped and took off across the river. So I don't know why it's here or if it's the same one you've seen for the last couple of weeks, but there is an osprey in the neighborhood officially. We also saw two bald eagles, a um, lot of deer, and the, the nine-year-old girl was excited that we saw a beaver carcass, uh, and I don't know why, we, why it was there. I've never seen one over there, but <laughs> just full disclosure, that's what the wildlife we saw on the ride. Um, I rode crow. As you know, I've been riding crow as much as possible uh, just to figure him out and get him used to whatever might life might throw at him and it turned out I had to pony the girl and Dugan on the majority of the river ride and if you don't recall ponying means that you actually lead the horse lead a horse behind you and at first he thought why is that horse so close to me and then he said oh okay um, and his his uh, response to most things is oh okay which is fantastic uh, that was the trip. I took a, we took a, a long part day ride yesterday afternoon and that was spectacular. Went up to Elk Meadows and it was chilly a lot of the way, but I was with some fairly intermediate riders and we did a lot of gating and um, loping, a little galloping. It was nice. And so that's been, uh, that's been the last couple days of happenings here. Pony clubs are done. The apprenticeship program is done. We have some small rides here and there. We have a big group this Wednesday. Uh, all women, they are the wives of the big group of men that came about a month ago. They come from New Frontier Ministries. I think they're out of Ohio. And they have kind of a men's group and the men's group has come out for the last few years. And this is the first year that the wives are going to come. Uh, I said that we would, since the, since the women were coming, that we could now do the harder ride. <laughs> which they kind of laughed at and kind of didn't. But we are going to do the harder ride with them. Um, I would like to, uh, you know, dock past, as you all know, on Tuesday. And uh, the flowers, these flowers are from Sandy. Aren't they beautiful? And I don't know if you can see, but there's a horseshoe with some dried flowers and a ribbon on it, which I cannot keep, which I will keep. Um, so you probably don't know that Doc has actually been not well for a number of years. And I didn't share it um, because it was kind of a private thing. And I guess in the back of my mind, I was hoping hmm, that it wasn't so bad. So basically, he had um, a spinal cord injury. And if you recall, about nine months ago, was it, that he was in the hospital for a number of days, over a week. And we couldn't figure it out until kind of when he started getting a little better, um, the vet said he had a spinal cord lesion. And then he wouldn't get a whole lot better and that he would get worse. Um, but Doc was, he was doing pretty well for um, quite some time. He wasn't hurting for quite some time. Um, we still were working on his feet, which were getting better. Uh, he had foundered, basically. Mm. So I also know that I've never been without a horse, except very briefly. So I knew that I would have to overlap horses. And that's, you know, Crow just kind of fell into my lap. He's the perfect horse for me at this time of my life, this age and 
experience, a more experienced rider uh, by leaps and bounds um, from when I, you know, rode Doc, got Doc. But so I, I knew that Doc was going to had to go at some point. Um, he was doing fine. I thought, well, you know, he'll just we'll just keep him like he is. Um, but there were a couple things that um, started him kind of on a downward slide. And by the way, he's had this, I've known about something was up with him for at least six years, at least. So there was one day when I, when I, uh, I don't know if I had, I think I had Crow then and I took Crow out for a, uh, um, off by himself for the ranch ride and Doc got very agitated you know, because his herd had left. Um, and we brought it, when we brought Doc back in that afternoon, he had a little hump on his spine, uh, which was inflammation, and he was a little more wobbly. Uh, not quite like he was, as you recall, I think it was April, but he was wobbly. And he, he wasn't, com he wasn't comfortable. Um, so I just kept an eye on him, gave him some anti-inflammatory, and it, it got a little more stable, but he didn't get a whole lot better. And I had the, the chiropractor came out, Dr. Welker, was it a couple weeks ago, 10 days ago? And I had Crow worked on, and I had Dugan worked on, and I had Doc worked on. And I, I knew that having chiropractic done on Doc would either be a good thing or a very bad thing. And, and I had to take the chance. Um, and it was a bad thing. It made him uh, very uncomfortable. Um, it made him a lot worse. And I don't regret doing it because it might sound weird, but I knew that it was, you know, I knew that he would have to be put down sooner rather than later. And I hope this doesn't make me sound awful, but I'm kind of glad that um, it kind of sped up the process. At least it sped it up for me because it made it very clear um, and almost urgent that um, I need to arrange for his euthanasia. Um, and there were a couple of interesting things that happened. And those of you who've had to say goodbye to animals you know, people say they tell you when. And this, Doc told me so clearly, you guys. And when it first started, when, remember when Doc and Crow were pasture buddies? And remember the photo shoot? Um, Katie Wardasani and Suzanne were out in the pasture, and they were taking pictures of Doc and Crow. And Doc and Crow, you know, shared air for a long time, and they were both so mellow, and it went on for so long, I thought, this is interesting, this is different. And I just, I felt, boy, I don't even know if I can put words to what I felt, but I knew that they were having a very intense conversation, a lot of communication. And then Doc put his uh, nose up to my ear, my, my, um, my neck, and just got really calm. It was almost just an otherworldly experience. And I kind of moved away because what Doc normally does when he pretends like he's being friendly is that it, he tur it turns into a game and he likes to make me laugh. And so pretty soon it'll be teeth and I'll go, Doc, stop it. And it's the game we play. But it didn't turn into that. He just stayed there and stayed there and stayed there. And that's uh, my, one of my pictures on Facebook. And I thought, well, this is all really interesting. And the time I thought, Doc is telling Crow that I'm his, and Doc is kind of passing the torch. Uh, but he still was doing okay. And then um, after the chiropractic, uh, I knew that it was time. And I am so grateful for the people who helped me out and for the whole sequence of events because it went exactly as I hoped it would. Exactly. Um, I arranged for the euthanasia, and then an hour later the truck was going to come to take him, and an hour after that he would go, and it sounds awful, but you bury horses and uh, animals in a landfill. Um, and it sounds awful, but he's buried, you know, and he's gone, and so it's okay. Um, and it went off pr without, a, without a hitch. I also wanted him to be out here on the lawn 
eating green grass uh, in the sunshine before he passed. Because if you know, because of his feet, he couldn't have grass or much grass. And I took the lead rope off and he was out here grazing with just a halter, but no lead rope. I wanted him to just, that's what I wanted for him. And it happened, it was incredible. Um, so I don't know if you know this, but when you put down a horse, uh, it's, it's two shots, like with a dog or a cat. And because the second shot doesn't always work perfectly, uh, Suzanne suggested I leave after the first injection, which I did. Um, uh, the night before, this is interesting, the night before, over by the feed room, um, I told Doc what was going to happen, and we shared air in that same kind of peaceful way for minutes. And I kept, I, I thought, how long can this go on? And I, I really, really got that it was, that it was see ya, that it was goodbye, that it was like our journey together is done. It, it was an amazing thing. Um, so he, it went off without a hitch. Um, guess who was here with him? Sandy, Taylor, and Suzanne. They were literally with him, which is just so beautiful. And uh, Taylor actually followed the truck to the landfill <laughs> because I guess the tarp kept coming off. <laughs> so, uh, but God bless her. And she texted me, you know, she goes, I'm at the, I'm at the dump, anything you need. It's like, no, thank you so much. Um, uh, it's funny because you all got pictures of her taking a bit, cutting his tail the night before. I think it was the night. Well, that was supposed to be a surprise for me. <laughs> and, but I, I said, you're busted. You're busted. The, the camera got pictures of you. And she went, she my language. She went, damn it, this was a surprise. But I said, I don't care. I still want the surprise from you. And I asked her to take all of Doc's tail, which Suzanne has. And um, a hat band from You All is Coming with Doc's tail, which is perfect. Because you know I like my hats, and uh, you know I'm taking my hats on my road trip, so Doc will be going with me. Of course. I mean, come on. Doc's always going to be with me. He's just... Um, and I wasn't going to put it on Facebook, but I put some pictures of us with now comment, and my mother, you know, wrote in that she was crying. And so, you know, people started writing in, and word was getting around, and it's just... Boy, he made an impression on people. His personality was massive. His, his just, he was the funniest, funniest horse, and he knew it. People from Colorado, uh, Washington, Los Angeles rode in like, oh, that horse, oh, that horse. He was just, and it's true, he made a lot of people laugh. Tons of people laugh, most especially me. So uh, it's been, it was a, it was a pleasure uh, to be his foil, which is how I feel about it. Um, you know, I'm glad in a way. I, we, and what you probably don't know is that when we were in Los Angeles, we did a lot of jumping. We did a lot of arena work. I rode him tons, uh, trail riding around Griffith Park. Um, but I, but quite a, several years ago, I knew he wasn't rideable anymore. So you probably didn't know that. You and often wondered. You were often wondering why I didn't ride him. Well, he, he wasn't okay. Um, and, you know, I did want to get on him one more time before he passed, but his back was bad, and I, I didn't want to do that to him. And it was okay. That sharing of the air that last night, I, it was ethereal. It was, uh, it was, it was huge. I mean, it was amazing. So I'll have, I have one doc story for you. Um... And then I think I'll talk to you about, if we have time, um, the story of my morning dove, which if you haven't read the magazine, uh, you don't know about my morning dove. And uh, when Gabby was here, she didn't know. So I would love to share that with you if we have time. So my one doc story out of millions. Um, so I got doc, he was a month off the track. I got him off dreamhorse.com and I went to look at him and I didn't get from here to here when he was my horse. I just knew it. I saw his eyes. Uh, didn't get a vet check. Uh, didn't ride him. And I'm glad for both those things. Because had I done those things, I might not have got him. And, uh, you know, he probably would have ended up on a slaughter truck or something awful. And so I'm just grateful that, uh, that my heart overrules my head most of the time. Anyway, 
So I, I put him um, at a stable in the Hollywood Hills called Sunset Ranch. It's a dude ranch. And it's awful. It is, uh, the horses are always up to their knees in manure. Too many horses in too small a space. A few stalls that people would board in um, because it was inexpensive. But believe it or not, in the Hollywood Hills, which is very, very upscale Hollywood actors, blah, 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 there's this awful place that should be shut down. Anyway, so Doc was there and, I, and with some very nice people who had some very nice horses. And, oh, this reminds me of another duck, more duck stories. Um, I might save the bird for next time. So I take Doc there and I turn him out with um, some other horses and in the arena and Doc picks up a stick and he starts to draw uh, in the dirt and he's literally drawing in the dirt and I went up to him and I'm like, man, what are you doing? And he, he's making up and down and back and forth. So, well, that's neat. So I take the stick and I keep it for years. Um, I don't know where I lost it, but I traveled, I kept it for a long, long time. And at, the, at that Sunset Ranch, um, one day, uh, the owner's son who managed the place had a psychic break in the middle of the night. And he got out all kinds of guns, laid them out on his bed, and then went out to the stable and turned all the horses loose together, the string and all the borders. I find this out the next day. So there are probably 40 horses running around in a space, oh, not even, the, not even the size of the activity lawn, maybe the tack area. And horses are getting hurt and horses are in a panic. And so I said, okay, I am, I got to get out of here, but I'm afraid to leave. So I, I made a plan. I, and I had only had Doc a couple months, by the way. Um, I don't know if you know this, but track broke means horses don't stop. <laughs> they have no, they have no training other than to go fast. So that's all, I barely rode him because I didn't know what the heck to do with him, why I had this horse. And so uh, I got my, uh, my horse stuff, except my saddle and bridle, secretly put it in my car, took it home that night. And then I came back in the middle of the night, it was pitch, pitch black. And I said, I decided that I, Doc and I were gonna sneak out and I was gonna take him through Griffith Park, under the freeway, that's what we call him there, under the freeway, across the LA River, which is concrete, and into the next neighborhood. If Peggy's uh, watching, Peggy, we were in Atwater Village, in, in a, to a stable where I had reconnected um, with a woman who kept my previous horse there for years. And I found her one day and she, I said, listen, I got to get out. Can I come back? She said, absolutely. So middle of the night, pitch black, I saddle up Doc, I bridle him and I get on him and out we go. Now, <laughs> you, won't, you won't be surprised to realize that I don't know where I'm going. All I know is that I have to go uh, east. So Doc and I are going and you know, I, I guess my determination um, gave me, and my desperation gave me such confidence that we were, we were a team um, at, that, at, at that night, that night. So I, I can't see the road. I don't know if we're on a road. I don't know if we're on trails. So we head west, up, down, left, right, here and there. And I just keep hoping we're going west and he's being awesome. So also realize he's five years old then. Um, and a couple months off the track. So we're riding, 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 riding. And finally we get to the tunnel under the high, under the freeway. And it's the horse tunnel. I mean, people ride under it all the time, but it's insane. You have to go down a really steep embankment, dirt and gravel, and then you ride through a concrete tunnel. So I, I'll never forget it. Uh, the sound of the of his hoofs, oh, bomb, in the in the echoing in the concrete. I'm like, oh God, here we go. So come out the other side, and I had a feeling he wasn't going to cross the water. Um, so I get off, 
and I walk him across the LA River. Uh, and again, it's concrete and there's not much water. Sometimes it's empty of water, but I walk him across, walk him up the other side, and then it's just a short, very short distance um, to San Rafael in Atwater Village, which is where I stayed. Um, so that, I hadn't thought about that in years until he passed, and then it just came back to what an amazing experience that was to, um, to be lost together and, and for me to ha want to save him so bad. Um, and another doc story real quick was at, the, at San Rafael, the place where we went to, I had doc stick. And it was a huge, uh, they had a huge uh, rectangular arena. And I said, hey guys, my friends, do you know Doc can draw? I said, really, he can, I swear he draws. Because he had done it, every time I had him the stick, he would draw. And as you know, Doc, he was always around me. So he's standing right there in the arena. He was loose. I said, hey, Doc, here, show him how you can draw. And I hand him the stick like I always had, and he wouldn't take it. I said, come on, please, Doc, Doc, show him you can draw. Mm-mm, he didn't take it. And I said, Doc, don't make me a liar. Take the stick and draw. He took the stick, he turned around, he ran as fast as he could to the opposite corner, turned around and dropped it. And I got this, it was almost like a message in my head, I am not a trick pony. <laughs> so he was like, uh-uh, lady. <laughs> so as you, if, those of you who know Doc, just from watching him, that, is very, that was very much his personality. Um, yeah, I miss him. Um, sometimes I cry, uh, but you know, it couldn't have been, the timing couldn't have been better. Uh, he wanted to go. He was surrounded by people who loved him. Uh, so, yeah, um, that was Doc, and uh, it will always be Doc. Um, and now I have Crow, who I told Suzanne the other day, I said, you know, Doc is the horse I deserved, but Crow is the horse I earned. I've learned a lot uh, being at Dunroven about horsemanship. Um, things I, I want to take on, things I don't want to take on, but uh, Crow is the horse, is definitely the horse for me. So it all worked out very well. Um, and thank you, Sandy, for the flowers, and thank you all for um, the hat band that, um, that is coming. Obviously, it'll be jet black. And Doc loved his tail. His favorite thing was to have his tail brushed, his favorite thing. So it's, it's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. So thank you for that. Um, what else? I don't know, Jake. Uh, please, questions, comments, um, anything you'd like to share with me, we can talk about. Uh, Jake will let me know. I've got him on speakerphone right here. Um, so I guess if you guys are still interested in, in another story, uh, I can tell you about uh, a bird. This happened, hmm, probably, some of my, some of my, some of the facts will be maybe not exactly accurate, but the, the, the idea of the story is, is accurate. Dates and times might not be right. So I was a teacher, uh, as most of you know, in Mar Vista, California, kind of borderline uh, Venice, borderline the hood, and I was teaching, this was my fifth, I think my fourth or fifth grade year. And it's early in the morning and I, we were in outdoor bungalows and I, I'm, I'm going to unlock my door and a bird lands on my shoulder, which is bizarre. Okay, this is, uh, this is, it's bizarre anyway, excuse me, but this is the city. And I, I don't move because I don't want to scare it. This is too cool. And after several minutes, I'm thinking, well, this is cool, but I have to go to work. So, and I still haven't looked at it because I, I don't know what it's going to do to me. Peck my eyes out, I don't know. So I open the classroom door. I go, I go to go in and the bird flies into the classroom and he lands on a desk. <sighs> I'm like, oh, geez. So the kids start coming in. What's that, Miss Kozak? What's that, Miss Kozak? I'm like, this is bird, blah, blah, blah. I tried to shoot it out. It wouldn't go. It would not go. Um, various things happened, uh, some are in the story, some are not. Um, I went to the Science Center on campus, got a cage, 
put it in the cage. Uh, it started cleaning itself. I didn't know it was cleaning itself. Its feathers started coming out. I'm thinking it's dying, and it's not. It's just molting, <laughs> as I know now from, uh, from you birders. Um, also, it was, it was in the room for a couple days, living in the classroom. I picked it up. I put it outside, and I start walking, and it's following me. I run. It runs. It's, it was the strangest, strangest thing. So anyway, he, uh, oh, I shut him out. I, lock, lo I locked him out of the room, too, and he started flying at the window. So I'm making, and I'm not making this up. So turns so long story shortish, one of my students, Kenny, said, let's name him Huzzah, H-U-Z-Z-A-H. It's an old, old, old word that's uh, a sound of celebration. I think it's from even the 20s. So huzzah. So of course I'm afraid he's going to freeze to death in the, cat in the classroom when it gets to be 65 at night. I take him home, get a cage. I was living in quite a big house at the time, had a, had a guest room that would, had a, the corner windows overlooking the beautiful backyard. Put the cage on the corner. You know, gave him a stick and blah, 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 blah. I never put him in the cage. So Huzzah had his own room. And it was a guest room. I had a bed. Um, I would walk in. He would fly around the room. He would land on my head as I vacuumed the, uh, up his seat and his poop. And, and it went on like that for, for quite some time. Um, I would go in to visit him. I didn't want him to be lonely. And I would go in with a book usually poetry, I was into poetry at the time, and I would sit on the, on the guest bed, lean back on, against the headboard, and I would read. Well, he would, when I would walk into the room every day after school to visit with him and read, he would circle again, and he would land on my chest, and he would turn to face the book, and he would go to sleep. True story. It sounds insane. Uh, and that went on for almost four years, believe it or not. Um, that was my guy, Huzzah. And it turned out that I had to, I had to leave that house um, and I moved to an apartment um, across town. Uh, there were lots of trees and there were actually, did I mention he's a morning dove? Oh, I had to do, re sorry. I had to do a lot of research to realize he was a morning dove and we would talk. Coo, coo, coo. I could do the, I could do morning dove very well. And we would go back and forth. It was really kind of cool. And I moved into the apartment, and Huzzah had to live in the hallway. And he re there was no windows. Um, occasionally, I would let him into the bathroom because there was a small window. But he was getting very upset. Uh, it got to the point where he was dive bombing my head. It was clear that he was not happy. And around the corner, uh, I was just off Sunset Boulevard, Sunset and Franklin, I think, somewhere around there, in Silver Lake, in the Silver Lake area. There were trees and tons of morning doves. And I realized that it was time to let him go, uh, which it was so emotional. I cannot even tell you. I cried and cried. So I went with actually a friend of mine, and I carried his awe, and I walked around the corner. And we had dumped a bunch of bird seed in, on the neighbors, <laughs> under the neighbor's tree around the corner so he would have something to eat. And sobbing, I can't even tell you. So I opened my arms, opened my hands, and he flew up into the tree, sat there for a second, flew down to my feet, sat there for a second, and then flew up to the electrical wire above. And I was like, and my friend said, he said, thank you to you. And I said, oh. So uh, I came and I visited him every day for, I forget. Now, again, this is one of those facts that changes because I don't know exactly. I'm going to say a couple of weeks. And he would be on the wire and we would, we would talk. Coo, 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 and he would say it back. And after two weeks, I went out, I looked up at him, and he had a mate. I was a little jealous. I, I have to be an honest, stupid human and tell you I was a little jealous. Um, 
he had a mate, and the next day I went out, and he was, and they were gone. And um, I don't have any pictures. I have some feathers. At the time, I had one picture on a cell phone, but it was, you know, ancient cell phone. This was 2006, 2005, I don't know. It's quite, it, which doesn't seem like that long ago, but, you know, over 20 years ago, I guess. So that's my huzzah story. It's very weird. But I know, I've heard stories of people being adopted by birds, and... Um, I don't know what it means or why, and he, why this baby, why this little fluff ball landed on my shoulder one morning. But that's, uh, that's my very true huzzah story. And boy, that's all the fur and feathers I have for you today. Gosh, I did fur and feathers. Um, and I think and fish is now in parentheses. And I, I have, I've had fish, but I have, I have no awesome fish stories. Um, oh, I have some praying mantis stories though. I'll push that to another episode. So thank you for joining me and thank you for letting me share my doc memories. Um, yeah, some people are wondering how I'm doing and I'm doing okay. It's not, I really thought, you know, making the decision and making the plans is really the hardest part. Um, on Tuesday, I felt a huge sense of relief because I didn't have to, you know, I worried about him every single day. And I hated looking at him knowing that he was not feeling good and that it was coming. And so Tuesday, I just felt a huge sense of relief. And since then, I've been getting, you know, sad, angry, irritated, just all those lethargic, all those, all those grief things. But boy, I don't have any, I don't have any regrets. You know, he didn't die from being colicked or a broken leg. It wasn't because of a tragedy that he died. It was because of love that he died. And I, I feel really good about that. Um, so thank you all for joining me and listening to me today. Uh, your support means everything to me. It really does. And I know he made you guys laugh a lot. He was a nut. Um, so I will see you. When will I see you? I will see you on Tuesday for Boots on the Ground and The Walkabout. Please let me know uh, what you want to see on Boots on the Ground and who you'd like me to talk to for The Walkabout. I think Jake's at work on Tuesdays, aren't you, aren't you Jake? Um, so I'll figure out somebody. Sorry, Jake? Okay, Jake works Tuesday, so I can't, I can't pin him down. We might be able to film one for, at some point, but I will, I will find something to entertain you with. Sorry, Jake? We could do that. Jake just uh, uh, suggested that we, you know, maybe schedule it for a little different time, which is not a bad idea if you all, if you all are into it. So I am going to start making my portable corral. I have some orange Krylon. It's a little more subtle, Celia than the orange that you um, bribed everyone else to agree to. I know you didn't. It's not a bad, orange is not a bad idea. But I happened to be at Lowe's getting the, getting the uh, PVC and the fittings and they didn't have the blaze orange. They had a more subtle orange. If you don't like it, I will do it again. But uh, maybe I'll do it somewhere out here so you can uh, watch me paint the fittings. I might do it out there with Crow. I'm teaching Crow to be a wanderer, like Doc was. I like that. Uh, Crow thought he escaped and was in trouble when he first saw me approach. He's got to learn that, no, it's okay. I, I put him out there. Okay, thanks, folks. I'm going to go shed some layers and start working on my portable corral. Thanks for joining me. Love you all very much. See you next time. Bye-bye.